Good morning everybody and welcome to LAB and my video all about how to get a training contract. This video is not about applications and interviews though, it's about everything that you should be doing before you get to that point to make sure your application is 100% kick ass when you get to it. To start off with a statistic, approximately 17,500 students were accepted to study law last year and only around 5,500 training contracts were given out. So it's a pretty tough market at the moment and it's not sufficient to just get straight A stars at GCSE and straight A's at A level and think that you will sail through the process without an issue. If you're one of those people, you're very lucky, but you still need to watch this video. My first piece of advice is get as much legal work experience as you possibly can. When recruiters and partners are looking to recruit you as a trainee, they want to make sure that you are wholly invested in a career as a solicitor and don't just have an interest in the law. What you learn at law school and practicing law are very, very different things. And trainees are a huge, huge expense for law firms and they want to make sure they're hiring people who are showing a real commitment to a career in law. If you don't have any legal work experience or you don't have any contacts in the legal industry, don't worry. I only had a couple of contacts in the legal industry where I was fortunate, fortunate enough to get work experience. But for the rest of my legal work experience, I just wrote letters to all local law firms, local courts, anybody and everybody who I thought might let me shadow them for a couple of days. And I was fortunate enough to get a couple of placements off the back of that. One in a criminal law firm and one in my local Crown Court, which was amazing. These are people I didn't know at all. I literally just sent off a really basic letter explaining that I was applying for training contracts and I wanted some experience and a couple of people were generous generous enough to let me shadow them. So that's how I got my legal work experience and I ended up with five placements because I ended up getting another placement off the back of my placement at the Crown Court. So don't worry if you don't have any contacts in the legal industry, you can find legal work experience even if you don't know anybody already. Just don't be shy, send off loads of letters and network wherever you can. If you are in a position where you are studying part-time and you are also able to get a part-time job, I would thoroughly recommend trying to get a job as a paralegal. Mainly because a lot of law firms offer training contracts off the back of someone being a paralegal at their firm because they already know you, they know that you're a reliable person, they know the quality of your work and that you will ultimately be a great trainee. But even if you don't get offered a training contract at the firm where you've paralegaled, having paralegal experience on your CV is invaluable. Law firms will love you if you have experience as a paralegal because it shows that you've actually experienced life in a law firm and you know how it works and you've enjoyed it and you're committing yourself to it and basically you can hit the ground running as soon as you're a trainee which is a really really valuable attribute so if you can have some paralegal experience thoroughly recommend getting that on your CV. My next tip is do something extraordinary. Don't panic, I don't mean hanging off the back of a plane over West India or anything like that. What I mean is do something over and above what is expected of you as a law student. You need to show that you are committed to doing something that is more than just your nine to five job. Law firms want to recruit somebody who is gonna dedicate their entire life to their firm. So you need to show that you are willing to dedicate time and energy into building yourself into a better person and into a better lawyer. Examples of things that you can do to be extraordinary are join your law society at uni. Make yourself chair, make yourself treasurer, make yourself events organiser. Do something which shows that you are committing yourself over and above your studies. Or if it's not for the Law Society, write for the local magazine or local newspaper or do a blog. Some people will even pay you to blog for them. Check out lawcareers.net and if you feel like doing a law school vlog, that is something, blog or vlog, then that is something really different and it shows that you have an interest in law and writing about it as well. Or if you want to do something like hang off a plane in West India, then do that. But it's something to stand out on your CV. I've been recruiting for a paralegal recently and I didn't have to read through that many application forms. But when something different popped out at me, it was so refreshing and I was really keen to interview that person and ask them about their experience because it was something out of the norm essentially and that's what you want to focus on is trying to show how you are different from everybody else and what skills you have that you could bring to a firm that nobody else has. 
Next up, do some charity work. Firms absolutely love charity work. There's a big focus on firms having corporate responsibility, corporate social responsibility, and doing business development, what we call BD. So if you can show that you are helping local businesses or local charities or supporting your community, raising money in your spare time, this will make you a really, really desirable candidate because you will be expected to do a lot of that at your firms when you ultimately become a trainee. My next piece of advice is get involved in absolutely everything. I know that's not what you wanna hear because you're already strapped for time as it is because you're trying to study and potentially work and apply for training contracts and have some time for yourself. I know it's difficult at the moment, but you really just need to sign up for absolutely everything that your university has to offer you because you never know when something is gonna to lead to something amazing. I know that sounds a little bit contrived, but you run into the most influential people at the most random events, I promise you. So sign up for events, whether it be lectures, whether it be workshops, whether it be seminars, whether it be law fairs, just sign up to absolutely everything and meet as many people as you possibly can because the more connections you have, the more likely you are to succeed at the training contract process because a lot of it is about who you know as well as what you know. So if you can meet people and make a good impression on them, even if it's in a field that you don't necessarily want to practice in or going to an event with a firm you don't necessarily want to apply to you just never know when things are going to change so keep your horizons as broad as possible and network as best as you possibly can my final point that i'm going to leave you with is be tactical when you are completing your application forms some application forms will be really broad and allow you to put in all of your work experience all of your charity work all your extraordinary activities but some will be quite constrained and you might only have a few questions which you're able to answer and you might only have a short word count. So if that is the case, think really carefully about what examples you're using. Sometimes it's not always about using what you perceive as the best example of something, but it's the most appropriate example for the firm that you're applying to. For example, you may have briefly attended a charity event for a charity that that particular firm has links with. So even if you didn't do something amazing with that charity, like raise a thousand pounds for them, even if you've just attended something that was linked with that charity, use that example because the firm will pick that out on your application form and go, oh great, this person already has links with the charity that we have links with. That's really helpful. So this kind of leads back to why I'm saying do everything that you possibly can because you never know when something is gonna be relevant ultimately to an application form or the training contract application process. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there because I've rambled on enough. I hope that this has been helpful and you've picked out some things from this that will really help you with your applications and the training contract process. As always, please leave me some feedback and let me know what other videos you would like me to do. And if you've enjoyed this, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks very much guys, see you in my next video.